be giving you the most important boxes, most important points from this topic that is very essential that you must know for your play one exam. So what happens if the chloride is excessively secreted in the exocrine secretion slide, in the sweat, in the mucus, in the digestive tract, what will happen? And the finally, the C4, cystic bronchiectasis, and the steatorrhea and the cirrhosis. Hello dear doctors, cystic fibrosis is one of the very five star hot topic for your PLEB1 exam. You will definitely get question from this topic. And cystic fibrosis is itself a very vast syllabus or very vast topic you can say. But I will be giving you the most important boxes, most important points from this topic that is very essential that you must know for your PLEB1 exam. So just follow me to the board. So cystic fibrosis is itself a very difficult topic. Most of the students struggle to understand what is actually happening in this disease. So in today's lecture, I will be giving you very simplest idea about the pathophysiology of the cystic fibrosis. So basically what happens, cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive condition. That means this is a genetic condition, right? So I'm not going in details about the autosomal recessive or autosomal dominant condition that is separate lecture. So today we will learn the cystic fibrosis and what this is what? This is a autosomal recessive condition. And what happens as this is a genetic condition, so there must be a defective gene, right? So what is the defective gene and what is the function of this defective gene? You have to know this. So the gene defect in cystic fibrosis is the CFTR gene. That is the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene. So from the name itself, you can understand cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. That means this gene is regulating the membrane conduction, right? The conduction of what? Of the ions throughout the membrane. So what happens basically in the normal individuals like me, like you, we all have this gene in our body. That is the CFTR gene is existing in all of the human body, in, in the body of everyone. So actually, basically, this gene is doing what? This gene is regulating the secretion. And secretion of what ion? Cystic fibrosis, C4 cystic fibrosis and C4, just remember, C4, the chloride ion. So this gene, this CFTR gene basically regulating the chloride ion balance or chloride ion regulation throughout the membrane. So what happens in normal secretions of the exocrine glands, all the secretion is having the chloride, right? But if this CFTR gene is defective, it is not regulating the chloride secretion in the exocrine glands. So that's why the secretions is having too much of chloride in it. So what happens if the chloride is excessively secreted in the exocrine secretion slide, in the sweat, in the mucus, in the digestive tract, what will happen? Just think about it. If in the respiratory tract you are having thicker secretion which is rich in chloride, it will block the alveoli, right? And there will be very, very high level of mucus which is very thick and which is very difficult for the cilia to be uh, extruded from the lung and it will give rise to the consequences like the recurrent chest infection and ultimately it is giving rise to the bronchiectasis, right? And in the GI tract, what happens if the GI tract secretion is becoming thick it is ultimately blocking the pancreatic duct and leading to the fat malabsorption or malabsorption. That is what it is happening in the cystic fibrosis. Let's talk in detail about it. So cystic fibrosis, this is a autosomal recessive condition I have written in the board and the defect is in there. CFTR gene that is the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene and there is loss of sodium chloride ion balance that's why the secretion is becoming thick. So thick secretion which is very high in chloride this thick secretion what it is doing actually I have given the first box that is in the newborn. What happens in the newborn this thick secretion or this chloride risk secretion is secreted in the sweat glands of the newborn and when the mother of a newborn baby is kissing the baby she will complain that she is having salty test that is the first presentation of newborn of a cystic fibrosis that is the salty test so this can be one hint in the question scenario that the mother of the baby is complaining of salty test 
when she is kissing the baby. And secondly, what happens if the secretion is thick GI secretion, what we know that the newborn, the first pus stool, we com call that meconium, right? So in the newborn, what happens? This secretion of the digestive system is becoming thick. That's why the meconium is not being passed. It is causing the bowel obstruction that is called the meconium ileus. So that is the second complication of the cystic fibrosis in the newborn. And thirdly, what happens? The third one is the prolonged jaundice. And the fourth box you can write in the newborn that is the cystic fibrosis. This is important complication in the male that is absence of fast. That means the vas is not developing properly. Ultimately, this is leading to the infertility. And the fourth, fifth box is that 2P box that is polyp and prolapse. That means the nasal polyp and rectal prolapse. This is the two another important complication of cystic fibrosis. So let's sum up it together in the newborn what we got that the salty test Second is the meconium ileus or the small bowel obstruction. Third is the prolonged jaundice. Fourth is the absent fast or infertility. And fifth one is 2P features that is the nasal prolapse and nasal polyp and rectal prolapse. Now look what happens in the lungs. In the lungs, as I say that the secretions is becoming thicker. We know that in our lungs, there are the ciliary movement. The cilia is doing what it is doing in the lungs, in the alveolar lining. It is just clearing the mucus secretion, is also clearing all the bacteria that we inhale through our inspiration. So if the cilia is not working properly due to very thick mucus in the lungs, the mucus is being there in the lungs. And high mucus in the lungs, this is a very good you can say very good uh, condition for the bacteria to grow and giving the recurrent chest infections. So dear doctors in cystic fibrosis in the question scenario, it can be said in the question scenario that this baby has always been a chesty baby. That means the patient will have recurrent chest infection, recurrent hospital admission with the chest problem like the pneumonia, so this is important presentation of cystic fibrosis that is the recurrent chest infections. And also this recurrent chest infection is ultimately leading to the bronchiectasis. And ultimately this is a cystic bronchiectasis it is producing that means the alveoli is becoming cystic that is why this is called the cystic fibrosis. So this cystic alveoli or cystic bronchiectasis, this is another important complication of the cystic fibrosis. So one important uh, word you have to remember from this discussion that is the bronchiectasis sometimes comes in the question with which organism commonly having the bronchiectasis or exacerbation in cystic fibrosis. Just remember is that the Staphylococcus aureus is the most common bacteria is causing the infections or the uh, exacerbation in cystic fibrosis. So from the lung what you have learned this mucus obstruction is causing the recurrent chest infection and ultimately cystic bronchiectasis with staph aureus right now we are going to the GIT let's see what happens in the GI tract so in the GI tract this thick secretion is basically blocking the pancreatic duct so the blocking of the pancreatic ducts, what happens in the pancreatic duct, what it is doing in our body, basically the pancreatic duct is producing the pancreatic enzyme which is very much essential for your fat absorption, right? So if the pancreatic enzyme is not being properly secreted from the pancreas, this person or this patient is having the fat malabsorption. And the fat malabsorption, as, as the patient is having fat malabsorption, the question scenario, it can be written there that the patient is having steatorrhea or the patient is having the stool which is difficult to flush or the floating stools. This is all indicating steatorrhea. And if this patient is having fat malabsorption, that means the patient is ultimately will have, these babies will have failure to thrive or the FTT. And that's why the patients of cystic fibrosis is having the short stature, short stature.
This is another indicative word in your question scenario will be given in the question of the cystic fibrosis. So what we have learned from the GI tract in the GI tracts, it is blocking the pancreatic duct. The pancreatic enzymes are not coming properly. It is causing the pancreatic, uh, low pancreatic enzymes is causing the fat malabsorption, ultimately steatoria, failure to thrive and the short stature, right? Yes, another wing I have made from the pancreatic duct is that chronic damage of the pancreatic duct or the pancreas is also damaging the beta cells of the pancreas. So if the beta cells of the pancreas is being damaged, this patient will also have the type 1 diabetes mellitus, right? Okay, now look at the fourth wing that is the liver. What will happen in the liver? Basically the same way. The liver, in the liver, the thick secretion is blocking the bile duct and ultimately this chronic, chronic injury to the liver is leading to the liver cirrhosis. So this is the all basic pathophysiology and also the presentation of a patient of cystic fibrosis. So let's just sum up what we have learned till now that is cystic fibrosis as a autosomal recessive condition. There is a defect in the CFTR gene which is why the loss of sodium chloride unbalance and ultimately all the exocrine gland secretion like from the mucus, sweat and digestive gland secretion is becoming thick and this thicker secretion is ultimately ultimately giving rise to the salty test in the skin of the newborn meconium ileus or small bile obstruction prolonged jaundice absence of vas or infertility and 2p that is the polyp and prolapse and in the lungs there are recurrent chest infection and ultimately cystic bronchiectasis and in the git there is the fat malabsorption all the steatoria and ultimately giving rise to the failure to thrive and short stature of the patient and also the type 1 diabetes and in the liver the patient is having the liver cirrhosis so among them for your plavon exam the two thing you have to must remember that is the lungs and the git right in the lungs that is the recurrent chest infection and bronchiectasis and in the GIT that is the malabsorption and now what is the investigation how you will investigate the patient so basically for the investigation as the secretion all in all the secretion the chloride will be high so simply we can just investigate the secretion like the sweats we just can check the chloride level in the sweat so this is actually the screening test that is the sweat chloride test we can do but in the newborn or below the age of 10 years actually we do the test that is the heel prick test the another name of the test is the Guthrie test which is actually preferred for the smaller child that is the heel prick test or the Guthrie test and for the adult we can do this that is the sweat chloride test and also there can be the question like that that are at a carrier mother as the this is autosomal recessive condition the question can come up in your exam like that a carrier mother of cystic fibrosis wants to have a baby now she wants to know that her baby will have the cystic fibrosis or not in that case we can do the investigation or do the test that is the pre-implantation genetic diagnosis or pre-implantation genetic testing we can also do and also as this is a autosomal recessive condition if you want to confirm the diagnosis that you have to do the genetic testing so for the investigation we have learned the newborn or in the babies we have to do the heel prick test or the Guthrie test and the second one for the adult is the sweat chloride test and the confirmatory test definitely the genetic testing and for the pregnant women we can also do the pre-implantation genetic testing and now what is the treatment basically as this is a genetic condition or autosomal recessive condition there is no cure so the treatment first uh, we are uh, we are writing it over here this is there is no cure of this disease but what we can do we can just give the supportive treatment like the if the patient is having the recurrent chest infection we can treat with antibiotics if the patient is having bronchiectasis that is the calf with sputum right we can give the patient postural drainage 
and also we can give the lung transplantation. So if the bronchiectasis is severe enough, we can also do the lung transplantation. And in the GIT, as the pancreatic enzyme is deficient, we can just simply give the pancreatic enzyme supplementation and also the fat soluble vitamin supplementation we can give over here. So what we have learned the treatment modalities that first one, there is no cure. Second, the supported treatment for the recurrent chest infection, we can give the antibiotics. And for the bronchiectasis, we can give the postural drainage and if the bronchiectasis is severe enough, we can do the lung transplantation and also we can give the pancreatic enzyme supplementation and the fat soluble vitamin supplementation. So let's summarize. I will be giving the summary works from the cystic fibrosis. This is five star works. Five star, you can say five words I'm, I'll be giving from this topic. So cystic fibrosis is the CFTR gene mutation. Sometimes the question can ask what gene is defective in the cystic fibrosis that is the CFTR gene and which ion is being uh, disturbed regulate uh, regulation that is the chloride ion. So just remember C4 cystic fibrosis, C4 CFTR and C4 chloride ion channel and then the C4 Soate chloride test that is the diagnostic test if the slowate chloride is more than 60 then the diagnosis is confirmed that is the cystic fibrosis and the finally the c4 cystic bronchiectasis and the steatorrhea and the cirrhosis that is the lungs and hepatobiliary and uh, liver the hepatobiliary complication of the cystic fibrosis so just say with me cystic fibrosis is the cftr chloride Sweat chloride, cystic bronchiectasis, teatoria, and cirrhosis. So just forget everything, say with me, cystic fibrosis, you can see I have put two diagram that is lungs and the GI tract. So cystic fibrosis is the lungs and GIT, that means bronchiectasis with malabsorption. And also the cystic fibrosis, the rule of C, CFTR chloride, chloride, sweat chloride test, and C4 cystic fibro bronchiectasis, steatorrhea, and cirrhosis. I hope and believe you have enjoyed this lecture about cystic fibrosis. So thank you, thank you very much. <music>